and by having this presence of mind is what allows the professor to excellently adapt to situations and think and implement new strategies and plans. Which is exactly what the professor does here with the 19th strategy of war, enveloping the enemy. The annihilation strategy. People will use any kind of gap in your defenses to attack you or revenge themselves upon you. So the key thing is to offer no gaps. The secret is to envelope your enemies. Create this relentless pressure on them from all sides. Dominate their attention and close off their access to the outside world. Make your attacks unpredictable to create a vaporous feeling of vulnerability. Finally, as you sense their weakening resolve, crush their willpower by tightening the noose. The best encirclements are psychological when you have surrounded your enemy's mind. And this is exactly the strategy that the professor devises once he has presence of mind, especially after hearing the death of Nairobi. He launches the attack of the seven missiles plan. He uses the tent as a metaphor. That is his target. The minds of the people in the tent is what he wants to attack and break. The whole idea is to attack his enemy from all sides, make them feel overwhelmed, which will lead them to succumbing to surrender psychologically. Now, as much as this is a very good practical warfare technique, it is also a very strong psychological technique to use against your enemy. As the police were about to execute a full-blown attack on the bank, the professor proceeds to launch the first missile, the honoring of the memory of Nairobi which caused the whole police force, the public, and most importantly, the tent to fill with silence and break their state. As well as showcasing to the public what has happened, this also put the professor on the moral high ground, which is another strategy of war. How can the police attack and storm the building when there is a funeral going on with the whole world watching? For them to ignore it and continue with the plan, the higher ups would know that this would have caused a media shitstorm and it would have made the police look like the bad guys and this is what the next part of the professor's plan entailed. The second missile the professor launched was the publication of Rio's torture and the illegal atrocities the government undertook. This caused a lot of international scrutiny and led to public outrage. This even divided the tent, as many people in the tent itself disagreed with the illegal torture of Rio, essentially morally dividing the enemy and causing internal chaos. What the professor then cleverly did was let the government think it was just simply his word against theirs. And there was no evidence to prove these allegations. And because of the government being confident that there was no evidence of this event occurring, Colonel Prito then went on to deny all the allegations with confidence publicly. Now, when the professor launched the next missile, which was publication of evidence that these atrocities did occur, Colonel Prito essentially shot himself in the foot, putting salt in the already massive wound and painting the government as nothing more than liars and manipulators. This then leads to another barrage of missiles to be launched from the professor's personal public application of the illegal detention of Lisbon and more evidence of the illegal atrocities the government were doing to the recapture and return of Lisbon back into the gang's safe hands. And as we can see the look on Tomayel's face at the end of season 4, it's clear to see that these barrage of missiles being fired from all angles psychologically broke him. When this strategy of enveloping your enemy is executed properly, this gives your opponents no gaps to exploit and no hope. They are surrounded and the circle is tightening. The feeling of being attacked from all sides pushes your opponent into a corner and denies them of any hope of making a counterattack. This feeling of being surrounded will weaken and drain their willpower. The sense of psychological enclosure is deeply disturbing to us often making us overreact. When someone or something encircles us, narrowing our options and attacking us from all sides, we lose control of our emotions and make the kind of mistakes that make the situation even more hopeless. The greatest danger in war 
is panic and confusion from within your own army, your own team or your own company. So when you're dealing with your competitors or if you're at war with them, shrink their possibilities of action and close off their escape routes. A few well-timed blows to make your enemies feel vulnerable in multiple ways and from multiple directions. Think of it like the professor does. You want to surround your enemy and psychologically break them. By launching an attack of missiles all at different angles and different directions and slowly enveloping your enemy into a place where the only option is to surrender. Create your own missiles and launch them against your enemy at a well-timed manner. The professor describes the psychology of it beautifully. When you're dealing with a fire and the fire is only getting worse, the only thing you can think about is putting out the fire. He describes it as thinking of the enemy as a tennis player. Think of your enemy being the only one on the tennis court trying to return every single one of the multiple balls that are being fired at him non-stop. While he's not realising that there are multiple missiles blowing up his house right behind him, draining and ultimately psychologically breaking him and winning the battle. And that's what I'm going to leave it on for today. Now the biggest takeaway I would say to take from this video is the importance of presence of mind. You can have knowledge of every battle and war tactic possible, but if you don't know how to get into the right state of mind to see when to use it and execute it efficiently, then this is the biggest cause of your failure. And this is one of the biggest contributing factors to the genius of the Professor and what you can do to think exactly like him. Now, if you like this video and you would like more of this type of content, make sure you leave a comment down below on who you want to see next. Because if I see enough comments and likes, then I'll continue breaking down the genius of the Professor <laughs> and maybe even the whole of the Money Heist gang. So make sure you leave a comment and like on your opinions below. And if this is your first time visiting the channel, welcome to the channel. And to all our loyal subscribers, we are glad you are here. We aim to produce at least one high quality animated video per week so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any golden knowledge